When polls close on election day in Germany, voters are provided with some answers, mainly how the various political parties performed. But after election day, one question immediately arises in the days, weeks, and sometimes months ahead. Which parties will form a coalition and govern the country for the next four years? So how does that work? How do political parties that were competitors the day before the election decide to compromise and work together the day after? Well, for a start, Germany's electoral system is based on proportional representation, which alone creates a system that is geared towards compromise. After the dust from the election settles, the parties survey the landscape and do some good old-fashioned math. Which two or three parties need to come together to control over 50% of the 598 seats in the Bundestag? If party A receives 26% of the vote, party B receives 23% of the vote, and party C receives 11% of the vote, then they may form the ABC coalition, controlling 60% of the seats in the Bundestag. Within this coalition, there would be one senior coalition partner, party A, and two junior coalition partners, B and C. If parties D, E, and F receive 14, 12, and 6% of the vote respectively, then party D becomes the so-called leader of the opposition. Sounds simple, right? Well, sort of. There are many options for coalitions, and we've seen a wide range of them at the national and state levels over the past 75 years. Since each of Germany's main political parties are associated with specific colors, folks piece together what coalitions could look like by giving them colorful names, like the Traffic Light Coalition, consisting of the parties represented by, you guessed it, the colors green, yellow, and red. Another one you sometimes hear about is the Jamaica Coalition, consisting of the colors of the Jamaican flag, black, green, and yellow. In the latter example, the red party would likely be the lead opposition party in the Bundestag, with the purple party and light blue party also playing opposing roles, but not necessarily aligned with each other. There's no formal opposition coalition. But simple math is hardly enough for political parties to want to join forces. The force of attraction to each other's political party platforms plays an even more important role. There has to be some chemistry there. Within hours of the election results, the courtship of negotiations between compatible parties begins. Where do their party platforms converge or diverge? If parties find alignment and are willing to compromise, then they may be on the path to forming a government. If interests diverge between parties, a coalition will likely reach a dead end. For example, you'll notice that none of the potential coalition options shown earlier include the color light blue, representing the far-right alternative for Germany. Although mathematically the AFD could work with another party to form a coalition, its far-right, xenophobic platform makes it an unwelcome outlier in German politics. Consequently, parties have traditionally avoided cooperating with the AFD. Once a political party finds its coalition partner, or partners, they decide together who will be the government's chancellor candidate. Unlike the US, where presidents are directly voted into office, Germany's chancellor is selected by the incoming coalition, approved by the president, and ultimately elected by a majority in the Bundestag. Electing the chancellor, and then appointing the various cabinet positions according to the coalition agreement, are the final steps in building the federal government. Lights, camera, action. A new government is ready to take the stage and promote a spirit of cooperation, compromise, and coalition building across the European Union, the Atlantic, and the world over. <laughs>